Well, good morning, everyone. You can keep finding your seats coming forward, but welcome to the Data and Innovation Summit, the first ever that's part of the National Hosting Convention. My name is Cheryl Marty, and I'm the chairperson for this event today. And I'd like to say I'm very, very happy to see you. I had this really bad dream two months ago that I had all this planned with everybody, and, and nobody showed up. So <laughs> it's great to see everybody here today. So as we, uh, as we think about the data and technology space and innovations, um, there's a ton of technology that's available out there. Um, these are just a, a handful of what's available in the areas that we're kind of focused on for the day. Um, these are different milking systems and monitors and other things for herds and pens. Um, but the idea here is there's a lot of information out there, right? Um, we also have a lot of data and data systems that are also available. Um, some software, some online in the cloud, um, others that are trying to combine all of those different resources together. And again, there's a, a, there's a whole list of them. And again, this might not be all of them uh, in the US only. So the idea here is there's a lot of information to, to deal with. And so kind of the underlying question here is how can we be better at utilizing all of this data that exists out there that you have to, to do and to manage your operations. So taking that data from just the actual data there to information that's gonna have some, some value to you that to create into more insights that's even more valuable to you that maybe there's some aha moments to make some different decisions with and then using that as wisdom to make better decisions going forward and even doing predictions and forecasting and other more advanced um, technologies. So that's kind of the underlying question. And we wanted to do, a, we did a little survey, and if you haven't filled out the survey yet, we'd love to have you still do this, but this was as of last night. Uh, we had some good responses with over 68. And uh, just to show you that we had a pretty good cross um, reference of, of different herd sizes. Um, we covered almost all of them. And we also had um, all areas of the country represented. Um, the Midwest, of course, is the biggest one here, being a little more local, um, but very good information across the board in all of the, the different regions. So one of the things we looked at was just um, how many pieces of data do they have that, the, that you're using on the farm? And so this is just the farmer responses only. And so we had about 57 people that responded to that. Um, the high majority there of, of those dairy producers are using DHI information, which is great. Um, we also, the second highest was genomic data. So there's a big group in this audience, a majority, uh, a large majority are using genomic data. And then the next highest really gets into um, herd software and management systems. Um, and the one that's the most popular, at least today, is the ones that are not related to parlor systems and so on. Um, you can see financial management data is also a big one there, and then the rest of it is lower down. I also broke that out based on herd size to see if we added all of those up that they're being used on each of the farms, what does that look like by herd size? And you can see there is a, a trend going upward from smaller herds to larger herds, so the larger the herd, they tend to use more data sources and data systems. When we looked at it regionally, there really was nothing we could explain to explain the differences there between the, the different regions. Now, if we looked at technologies, again, the 57 respondents that were dairy producers, the most popular answer was none. <laughs> so that's probably a good thing while we're meeting here today is um, we're here to learn about new technologies and new data sources and so on to, to put it all together but none was the biggest response. And of, of those that actually had technology as the most popular response was those that were using a collar-based monitoring type of a system for their cows. And I'll, you can see the ones to the right, those are the more the newer technologies and a lot of those are just very minimal uh, usage to date. What's interesting though is when you look at the future and kind of what you're looking at going forward, what you're interested in or would continue to use in the future, um, What's nice to see is that the none category go goes down to almost nothing. Um, we do see the collar-based technology having less interest. Um, and then what's really was really a big one there, a big jump up was the robotics. So a lot of people are really thinking about robotic milking. Um, 
And then really every other technology too, there, there's a really high interest in learning a lot more about each of these other types of, of systems that you'll hear about in various forms today. Then we also looked at, well, just how confident are you using in the data that you have? Um, and you can see there that there's lots of opportunity to um, do even more and do better and learn more from our data. There is some that are very confident, but I bet we could find some more ways to do some predictions and use that data even more complete. And then if we looked at how confident are you in adopting the new technologies on your farm, a uh, little surprising to all of us last night, we met with the speaker group and 30% um, were very confident in new, newer technologies. So it'd be awesome to dig into that a little bit more and see why is that? Why are they confident? Is it because they have great advisors? They've done it before? Or is it just they have confidence in themselves to be able to tackle anything they have? So it would be really interesting to dig into that a little bit more. So our scope today then is going to be really anything related to the dairy cow data and how that might either be um, a pen data with her in, in the pen um, or the farm, basically a whole operation. So anything revolving around dairy data on the individual animals. Our objectives are really producer focused. So on our committee, that was the, the most important piece is, you know, this was with producers in mind, for producers. Uh, we wanted really tangible things that we could, we could take home from this event. So we wanted to have, uh, learn new ways to improve how we use this information, what the technologies were out there, um, to be more profitable in the end and make healthier cows, better decisions with that going forward. So our target for this was really to focus about 80% of our time on data-related things, how do we use that information better and so on, and about 20% on the product. Um, then we also were thinking about, okay, what do we want to uh, spend time on as far as what can we do today? And we wanted to spend the majority of time there on tangible things that you can take home and start tomorrow and about 20% future focused. And we think we've got the agenda that will, will meet those criteria. We're also focused on herds of all types, shapes, sizes, registered, commercial, any breed. So um, glad to see a, a big variety and audience here today as well. So I wanted to thank my committee uh, while I had a chance. Um, we've been working on this program for over a year and really appreciate the help, but we've got a good combination of producers and industry people that were involved in planning this event. And then I especially want to thank the donors. They really stepped up for this event when they heard this was going to be part of the National Hosting Convention. We had a lot of new sponsors that were um, starting, uh, had the interest in this. Uh, we also had um, ones that stepped up even higher than they would traditionally put in for a, a normal convention. And so really thankful for all of these companies. And if you have an opportunity to thank them today, we hope that you'll do that um, out in by going to the exhibitor booth or saying hello, because most of the exhibitors and the sponsors for the Data and Innovation Summit portion of the convention are here today. And here's some more. We had also a couple of categories for the startup um, groups that are a little harder for them. You know, they're, they're brand new, and um, so want to give them a little help and some support as well. So next, um, I'm going to turn this over to our MC for the day. Uh, who will be Walt Cooley. He is the editor-in-chief at both Progressive Dairy and at the Cow Tech Report, where he's also the founder of it. So it's all yours, Walt. Thank you. Uh, really, we need to uh, start the day by um, giving a big round of applause to Cheryl. She has done a lot of work for this uh, conference in the background and uh, really only uh, maybe just for the love of the breed and uh, for the love of technology. So if you wouldn't mind just joining me in giving a big round of applause to Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. All right, uh, uh, as Cheryl said, I'm the uh, editor of, uh, or editor of Progressive Dairy. Been there for about 16 years. And um, during COVID, uh, because I didn't own cows and I didn't have something else to do, um, I started a publication called the Cowtech Report to follow along with these technologies, these startups, these things that are emerging in the dairy industry and the, the beef industry to help uh, manage cows better. And uh, so if, if you're interested, uh, go ahead and go to the cowtechreport.com and you can follow along with 
what we're uh, covering there. It's a, a weekly uh, update for you on technologies. So I uh, want to go through the day today and talk about kind of the uh, outline of how we're going to manage things. So if you have not downloaded, <clears throat> excuse me, if you haven't downloaded the Whova app, please do so. We'll be utilizing that to manage questions uh, for the speakers and the panelists. And so uh, make sure that, <clears throat> excuse me, you uh, go and get that app. You'll utilize your email to register for an account and then the uh, event code there, you might want to jot that down uh, on your pad of paper uh, just to make sure you can link up with us. You can uh, view the speaker and panelist biographies uh, on the app. We won't be spending a lot of time talking about people's backgrounds. You can find that in the app. That'll be listed there. And then again, the main thing will be to uh, be able to ask any questions. I'll be moderating those questions as they come in through the app. So please uh, go through and get the app. <clears throat> you'll, see, you'll see on the screen here uh, some of the arrows where you can find the Q&A, the speakers, uh, and some of the documents, and then that survey that Cheryl referenced earlier. You can also provide feedback. Please do. We'd love to have feedback about these sessions and what's been most useful to you. And you can also download presentations and other documents through the app. So huge resource here to make sure we're using the app for uh, communicating with each other throughout the day. Uh, so the agenda, the speakers, most of the speakers have about 25 to 35 minutes. Um, and uh, we've got some panels. You'll notice that there's a card at your, de uh, your desk. I call it your desk. This is classroom style, but you're seating there. Um, you can see the, kind of the arrangement for the day. Uh, you want to circle 10:15 is our break time. So if you need to make a call, um, step out, um, that would be the time to target. Uh, this is a good time to also remind everyone to uh, silence your phones. Make sure that they're at least in uh, uh, silent mode, if not uh, completely powered off. We have some panels that uh, will be later this, uh, this, this afternoon, um, and looking forward to those technology spotlights. So I'll kind of introduce those as we get one this morning to start off with, but uh, these are the uh, sponsoring companies. We want to, again, thank them for their participation. <clears throat> After, there's, uh, we'd, we'd encourage you to stay longer. Uh, between 1.30 and 2.30 is the uh, Holstein annual meeting but there'll be also time for uh, talking with exhibitors at their booths. Uh, there's a Holstein research panel from 2.30 to 3.30, and then at 3.30 p.m. is when uh, there's some specialized meetings. You can see that on the back of your card uh, for, from some of the sponsors. They have uh, educationally sponsored seminars that they're offering. So um, I'll highlight those as we go throughout the day, the, the ones that are um, having sessions that you might want to circle to try and attend this afternoon. And then immediately following the seminars at the Military Heritage Alliance, which is just across the street, uh, there's, uh, there'll be some social time and uh, a pre-convention sale dinner. So you'll want to make sure that you uh, <clears throat> uh, go out and interact with our exhibitors. They, uh, they have some free drink tickets that you can um, receive from them for having a conversation. So that's uh, our way to encourage interaction between the two of you is to get out there and uh, have some discussions and, and earn some free drink tickets. All right, <clears throat> we're going to start with some technology introductions. These are spurs throughout the day. You'll see those. Um, and these are primarily videos that have been provided by our uh, sponsoring companies. And um, so we're going to start off this morning with some videos from Cow Manager, which has a booth. They also have a seminar at 3.30 today uh, with uh, Zisk. They have a booth as well and Supervisor Systems. Let's go ahead and watch those technology introductions. A cow's ear contains a wealth of information. Cow Manager's smart ear sensors know everything about the health, fertility, nutrition, and location of cows. The sensors measure the ear temperature of cows 24 hours a day and record their activity, rumination, and eating behavior every minute. The ear sensor fits around an electronic RFID or blank tag. You scan the QR code of the sensor and link it to the correct cow in the system. With only one handling, you simply put the sensor in the cow's ear. The cow's data is collected by wireless routers inside or outside the barn. Are the cows in several barns? Simply place an extra router so all data from the cows can be processed quickly. This data is forwarded to the main antenna attached to the computer. Are the cows walking in pasture? Then you can also monitor the cows with a router on a solar panel. 
You receive notifications about the well-being and performance of your cows on your smartphone, tablet, or on the computer. For example, you will receive a notification one or two days before the cow is clinically sick, and you know which cow should be inseminated at what time. You'll be able to reduce usage of reproductive hormones and antibiotics, which saves money and contributes to sustainable farming. You can also give your advisors and employees access to Cow Manager via multi-view and determine what they can and cannot see. Cow Manager is regularly updated for free with customer inputs and can be linked to almost all herd management systems worldwide. You always have the latest developments and all the information you need for efficient management in one system. Start using Cow Manager. You will not only manage your cows, but the total success of your dairy farm. Welcome to Ziscap, an app made specifically for busy dairy farmers. Zisk helps dairy farmers with the financial future of their farm. It is designed to be simple, fast, and easy to use. So let's take a look at what the app does. Here, your profit projection is displayed for the next 12 months. Looking forward can help you manage the dairy's risk. Milk, corn, and soybean meal markets are displayed in current time, and the most current industry news is displayed on the news feed. This allows you to create custom alerts to notify you of fluctuation in prices. It also incorporates your current contracts for a more accurate projected profit. And the best part is, it's completely free. Do you know the future of your dairy farm? Zisk is here to help. Zisk is currently trusted by 3 million dairy cows in the U.S. What's being said about the Zisk app? This app gets more dairy producers' eyeballs on a daily basis than any other media source available today. So download for free and let Zisk assist you in your farm's financial future. I'm Keith Sather, President of Chaos Dairy Consulting and Supervisor Systems. Every day we work together with dairy producers such as you, putting together nutrition programs and dairy management practice that help you make your dairies more efficient. Along the way, we found a real hole in how dairies were managed, and, and that was specifically the feeding program, which caused us to create Feed Supervisor, a feed management system that monitors what do you feed your cows, what does it cost to feed your cows, and what are the efficient outcomes in the end. Our ruggedized technology was also used in hoof trimming, allowing your hoof trimmer to better record information and better treat hoof health issues on your farm. In feed management, inventory management was really the final frontier. So we created Truck Supervisor, a system in which you can monitor everything that comes onto the farm, everything that leaves the farm, and everything that's fed to your cows. Our focus is mission critical, meaning that you have to be able to feed your cows, whether it's 20 below or 120 above. 
That's why we use ruggedized computer technology that's backed up by 24-7 customer support. We are a family-owned business, and we treat each of our clients as part of our family. You're not just a number here at Supervisor Systems, but rather you're, a, you're an individual with specific needs, and it's our goal to help you meet those needs by walking in a true partnership with you. Great. We appreciate our sponsors again for uh, their participation today.